Good morning, YouTube. How are you this morning? I'm not too bad. I'm actually pretty good this morning. It's a beautiful day. Uh, it is about 8 a.m. Central Time, and I am in Fayetteville, Arkansas, at the Home Depot store on the Joyce Boulevard. Um, I got here last night at uh, 6.30, and uh, it was actually a pretty nice run up. Um, I did discover an annoying habit of this new truck, though. No. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so I got here for 6.30. I really didn't have any problems getting up here. And uh, bought fuel and roll into Oklahoma. And once I got up here, um, I kind of knew this was in a shopping center, but I didn't know the extent of the shopping center. This place is massive. There is everything here except for Lowe's. And I bet you that's right. I know that's around here somewhere because I delivered sheetrock to it once. Um, so when I parked the truck, I went inside, just check with the manager, make sure it was still okay to park on the property like I always do, unless it's the middle of the night, of course. He said, yep, just don't park in the back because I need to be able to get the, uh, the local truck in and out before, you know, they start unloading us. I said, okay, cool. So I parked the truck and walked over to, uh, Red Lobster and had Red Lobster for dinner last night. And it was a really, really good meal. Um, I will have to say, though, the meal was actually free. Or I would have eaten over at the Wendy's or something. <laughs> um, and the reason it was free is yesterday while I was cleaning out my wallet after buying fuel, because it was getting rather thick, I found in the back an unused, well, I think it was partially used, $100 Darden gift card. Darden, if you don't know, owns Olive Garden, uh, Red Lobster, and a bunch of other restaurants. Well, I knew I'd used it once before, so I called the little number on it to see how much was left, because generally I would have remembered it, because I think it was more than a year old, if not longer. And it had uh, $48 to line and some change. I was like, yeah, wicked. So I went over there and got me a free meal. had a Ultimate feast and uh, rolls and our biscuits, they call them. They're little honey butter cheddar biscuit, but cheddar bay biscuits. And a uh, couple of Dr. Peppers and stuffed myself up really well. And uh, I gave the card to the waiter, who's a nice guy, and uh, let him keep the change. It was like $34 for the bill I let him said, Whatever, whatever's on there, you can have. And he came back and said, thank you very much, and I left. Got into the truck, checked my email, uploaded yesterday's video, and went straight to bed. I think I was asleep by 9.30. And, uh, it was, I mean, I slept really well. The only problem was it got cold. But I could not get the EPU to come on. I don't know what the problem was. I finally got it to come on this morning. Have to fill in with it, but here's my problem. Here's the I have two issues with the truck, and I need to get them looked at. I know I've talked about this truck since I got in it, but it's an older truck, and it's got 340,000 miles on it, and it probably needs some other repairs. The uh, I need to get the inverter looked at. It's always just turning itself off. Sometimes it'll overload. It'll it'll show it's got an overload warning when the temp when the refrigerator's running. And it doesn't, other times it doesn't. And a lot of times, I'll be driving down the road, it's on, working just fine, I'll hear it beep and turn off. It's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to stay on the entire time, unless you turn it off, or it has an overload. Period. And uh, if the truck is below 12.9 volts on the batteries, the EPU will not turn on. Well, it'll turn on, but the heater won't engage. There you go. Whether I'm going to worry about that right now, I don't know. Because it is February and it should start getting warmer. That's what I think. It's already been warmer, but it's chillier at night. And I got plenty of blankets, so once I'm in it, it's okay. So, The other real problem 
that I'm experiencing <clears throat> is this transmission. I'm not sure. I guess it's designed to do this, but I've heard other people talking about it, but it's annoying as hell. Um, and I experienced it really well coming up 49, uh, I-49, yesterday come uh, to get here from Fort Smith. If you're pulling a hill, works great, other than it has a tendency to drop a gear a little early to pull harder and run the RPMs up into 17, 1800 RPMs. When I try to stop it from doing that, it goes right back to doing it, and it doesn't like it if I put it in manual mode. So I'm going to have to ask about that, but the real annoying thing is as soon as it gets to the top of the hill, it lets off the cruise and tries to coast down it, and it does it just fine, but as soon as it gets to 68 miles an hour, this truck is governed to 65, it engages the engine brake, drops the gear, and starts and starts slamming on the brakes to slow down. So I have to turn off the cruise before I get to the top of the hill, you know, and as soon as it gets to 70 miles an hour, the check engine light comes on. I've never experienced that in a truck before. It's really, really annoying. Um, I'm going to have to just ask to see if that's part of its system or what. And uh, there is a third thing that's annoying, but you get this anyway, especially if you have if, if you have an on guard. This thing, like I said, does not have the on guard system. It has the uh, Daimler um, you know, mitigation system built into it. And uh, it uh, <clears throat> likes to, uh, to, you know, break at phantom objects. Yesterday, uh, it dropped, it engaged maximum engine brake and dropped a gear and slammed on the brakes for a, uh, uh, a bridge. There wasn't a single thing anywhere near me. Clears, clears a bell, no debris on the road, no cars. The nearest vehicle was more than a thousand feet away. And uh, I was going under a bridge on I-40, and uh, it uh, <laughs> I about sh I about shit myself for lack of a better word. Sorry about my language. You know, you know, guys know I don't like to cuss on these videos, though I am a sailor. <laughs> uh, it's uh, frustrating beyond belief. Well. The other Maverick truck who was coming here from Home Depot yesterday, which I don't remember if I mentioned or not, is in front of me. He got here before I did, but he parked in the back in front of the loading door. Whether they ever say anything about to him, I don't know. But of course, I parked in the front. I can walk back here this morning, turn in my bills at 6. And I cruise there. He's already back here untarping. So I untarped out there and then pulled around and pulled my straps off. And uh, at some point or another, um, one of the timbers supporting one of the uh, bundles of lumber broke so that piece of the load shifted a little bit to the driver's side of course my straps kept it on and uh but i find it kind of weird i've never had that happen before and i didn't notice it i'm wondering if it actually happened uh this morning because i don't think it was like that when i started tarping i think it shifted as i was turning the corner Oh, well, such is life. Um, not sure what I'm going to be doing. Of course, I'm only 80 miles from Fort Smith, so that's probably where I'm going to be going unless they change their minds. So, I don't know. I will let y'all know. See you later. Good afternoon, YouTube. How are you this afternoon? I'm all right. Could be doing better, but I'm good. Um, it is uh, about 12.15 Central Time, and I am in Fort Smith, Arkansas, on the Maverick Yard across the street from Gurdow. Um, when last we talked, uh, they uh, finally uh, finished the guy in front of me, and I pulled up and took him like 10 minutes to get the stuff off. And then uh, I went and got my bills, went to the head, got back to the truck, sent in my empty call. And I guess I sat there maybe three or four minutes, and then I got a message telling me to head to Fort Smith. I think I told you all that one, but it's kind of a given at this point, isn't it? Um, then, uh, so I started heading down here. Uh, just as I was 
pulling down Planters Road, getting ready to turn into place, I got a load dispatch. Excuse me, it's kind of bright, even though it don't look like it. Um, got a load dispatch and a pick, to pick up here. And I got here right at 10 o'clock, and the pickup time was between 10 and 1. Um, so I came, went and checked in, got my paperwork, found it's a preloaded trailer, which... I really don't care for but it wasn't too bad today um, the uh, apparently they're keeping eight foot they're keeping the trailers fully stocked now here so you all you got to do is move what little equipment that you have to move so I didn't have to move my eight foot drops I just had to move my four foot and my canvas which I put on the load uh, pulled around found the trailer moved what little I needed to drop the extra equipment chains friction mat um coal pad coal pads things like that on the deck of my old trailer moved over to the other one had the trailer checked out and verified and then i tarped it all up and ready to go and that doesn't sound like it's all that much because i didn't have to secure it or nothing but it still took two hours because i had to wait it took me 35 40 minutes to to move what equipment i needed to do and verify the trailer was properly secured and then i had to wait almost an hour for them to come verify the trailer after I called them twice. Finally, once I got over here and verified it and all that good stuff, I was able to tarp it even in the wind in about 35 minutes. Now I'm kind of sit here, sitting here and uh, uh, waiting to leave because the trailers don't match the load information that I have. So once I get that fixed, I'll be able to get out of here. Um, this load is going to Columbus, Indiana. It is uh, seven bundles of uh, 21 foot high grade shiny bar. Um, though it's not shiny bar, shiny bar. I don't have to put a bulkhead on it. It's just real shiny. It's considered a gray bar. But um, it doesn't have to be there. And this is where I'm not all that happy. Uh, it doesn't have to be there until 1230 on Wednesday. It pays. Uh, 649 miles, but it's going to take me 710 to drive it. Not really sure. I don't like it, but it's, it's miles and money. So that'll give me uh, 1100 roughly for the week. And uh, so shouldn't be too bad. Um, I did get one question that I... Uh, didn't get a chance to answer it. I was going to do it here in the video. Someone asked me last week what these new glasses are that I have. Because uh, they're different than the other ones I have been wearing for a while. These are Oronsu. R-O-N-S-O-U. Driving glasses. Uh, they were sent to me by an admiring fan. Um, I kind of like them, actually. Um, they're... Uh, they're uh, Jap. I think they're Japanese gla glasses. I don't know where they're made. Where they're made from? The wording on the inform information sheet sounds like a, you know it's translated from another language at least. Uh, but they're actually pretty good. They're polarized, but not in such a way that a lot of polarized glasses are. You look at stuff that's got polarized screens and it makes those little wavy lines. These don't do that. Um, they're also good for cutting through rain and fog. I've already tried them on both and I kind of really like them. My only uh, thing I do not like about them is their straight edge. I prefer mine to bend, but these will work. And they, uh, you know, something else. Um, oh, they're, the lenses are a little big for my face. I, I prefer mine to be more along the lines of the orbs of my eyes so there you go for those two people that asked about the change in sunglasses why anybody would even notice that i have no idea they are ronsu you can buy them from amazon their listed price i think is 90 dollars, and i believe they've been recently on sale for as low as 29 dollars. and they come in a bunch of different colors i just like black someone sent me a gift certificate and suggested i get them so i did Thank you all very much. Um, I guess that is it for the day. Wait for them to fix the trailer on my load. And then I'll get out of here. I'm probably only going to go about 300 miles today. 
no point in killing myself. So until uh, I unload on Wednesday, keep the shiny side up. 73s. Be safe.